Good morning. My name is Alec, and I'm the founder and CEO of VGIS. Joining me today is Earl Schiller, and together we are going to share our experiences with building augmented reality applications, and specifically augmented reality applications with Bentley Itmin services as the back end. Our presentation will have two parts. In the first part, Earl is going to provide an overview of the system, the key components it has, and the use cases. In the second part, I will discuss the process of building an augmented reality application and the key components that you need to consider when trying to create something for field services. We will also highlight the areas where using Bentley iTwin services will help you speed up your development or overcome certain roadblocks that we discovered along the way. And with that, I turn it over to Earl. Thank you for joining us today for an overview of the VGIS BIM and GIS visualization platform. VGIS has been in business now for just over three years. And in that time, we've begun working with about 70 clients globally, as well as two key partners in the space. Those key partners are Esri, as well as Microsoft, and both organizations have seen fit over the last couple of years to recognize the efforts VGIS has made in this area and provide us with different awards in the mixed reality and realizing virtual object space. The system is designed to present job site data in augmented reality. At the outset, VGIS was designed initially as a platform to visualize underground utilities primarily, as that was the most obvious use case for this type of technology. Since that time, however, VGIS has evolved by enhancing the product to deliver visualization, not just of GIS data, but also BIM data, as well as reality capture data in the field. Let's talk a little bit about the origins of the system. VGIS was initially conceived to provide users in the field with accurate visuals that they had difficulty achieving looking at standard 2D drawings and maps. In our mind, by providing users with a color-coded 3D view of the world below their feet, users would be able to more quickly, more accurately, and more safely understand the environment around them. The initial goal was to help users in the utility space get away from relying on tags and flags on the ground and instead provide everybody involved in the process with a much more data-rich and user-friendly visual experience. In this example of VGS being used in the field, you can see that as the user pans around, they are able to visualize all the details in color-coded 3D, able to easily see their distance to an object, the depth of, depth of that object, and some simple tag information as they hover over that object. An interesting aspect of VGIS is its ability to present the data automatically to the user based on their location. See how the data follows the user as they move forward through that landscape. If a user requires additional information about any asset they're viewing, they can simply click on that asset scroll through the appropriate or associated metadata for that asset, and even have the ability to interact in a two-way manner with that data by clicking the edit button, as you see here. Users can add information to data fields, change information, even change the status of an object by virtue of updating its tag in the field. As we mentioned at the outset, VGIS not only consumes GIS data sources, but now consumes a wide variety of BIM data sources. In this particular example, the user is visualizing and walking through a geo-referenced Revit model that they are able to visualize on site where this project will be developed. If there was additional data, such as underground utilities, the user could additionally view those layers of data simultaneously. 
VGIS allows users to view and capture what we refer to as reality mesh. In this example, the user is revealing a scan of, a, of data or excavation work that was previously done at this location. That capture was done just using the user's phone or tablet and its built-in video camera. No additional hardware is required. Once the user captures video of the site, they can automatically upload it where it will be processed in the cloud, converted into a reality mesh, and made available back on the VGIS platform for visualization in the field or in any location actually through our web portal. That brings us to the subject of our unified view of federated data. VGIS is unique in the way it handles multiple data sources simultaneously, taking those data sources into the back end of the platform, combining those visuals, using the georeferencing information of those data sources or models, and automatically displaying the appropriate visuals on the end user device. From an end user perspective, they simply go into the field, launch the VGIS application on whichever platform they choose to use, and the visuals that exist at the location in which they are standing will instantly appear because VGIS automatically will know who they are based on the device they're using, what their permissions are, and where they're located. This is different from other platforms where all or much of this work must be done in a manual fashion. By automating this approach to data visualization, VGIS becomes a much simpler platform to deploy with much less overhead cost. Because we're talking about spatially referenced information, it's of course critical that the system understands where that user is located. At VGIS, we provide a couple of different options for doing this. One option is to use an external GNSS device. By connecting this type of device, the user will benefit from whatever the inherent level of accuracy of that device is. For example, if a user is using a high precision RTK corrected unit that is designed to achieve centimeter accuracy in the field, that's what the VGIS ap application will be able to achieve. But VGIS also offers other options. VGIS offers a unique option of an internal positioning method that is a patented process combining ortho imagery and optical tracking to dramatically enhance the internal positioning capabilities of the mobile device. Using the appropriate overhead imagery, VGIS can achieve in the range of 10 centimeter horizontal accuracy in the field. Similarly, VGS offers a very innovative solution for HoloLens users. Users using the HoloLens 2 device have the ability to use what we call a GNSS to HoloLens bridge, which enables that HoloLens device to achieve survey grade accuracy in the field by virtue of connecting it to a GNSS unit. VGIS also offers a system we call virtual tags. Using the virtual tags option, the user simply clicks on the tag button in the app and drops a geo-referenced virtual tag that will snap to horizontal surfaces. That tag will remain there perpetually until an authorized user changes its position or deletes it entirely. The beauty of this system is that other users who visit the same location and are using VGIS will be able to visualize those tags, see the data that was left behind by the author of that tag, and add to that data, edit that data, or delete that data if they are authorized to do so. Another great feature of VGIS specific to HoloLens users is the ability to get a bird's eye view of their surroundings. When using a HoloLens device, when a user switches from augmented reality to map mode, 
they are immediately presented with an on-the-fly rendering of the location they are working in. They see themselves positioned at the center of that floating image as an avatar with the pink cone representing their field of view in AR mode through the HoloLens. This gives them the ability to do a virtual flyover of the location, still seeing all the BIM and GIS data for that area. VGIS is deployed around the world by organizations in a variety of different industries. Many of our clients operate in the local government and utility space, while others are organizations in the oil and gas and broader energy sector, or organizations like Skanska, Atkins, and Stantec that offer consulting and engineering services to their clients on a variety of projects. Thank you, Earl. To summarize, our app aims to address several use cases, including asset management, new construction, anything that deals with GIS data, and oil and gas operations. And now I want to discuss what we identified as the key components of any practical augmented reality system that you may want to build for field services. We generally categorize them in five different groups. The very first one is, of course, visuals. Second one is positioning, visual accuracy, collaboration, and of course, the backend component and efficiency. Let's discuss them one by one. On the visual side, it's very important that the visuals that you present in augmented reality are descriptive. It is not hard with the current tools to put something in augmented reality. The question is whether it will communicate the message that you're trying to convey to the user, or it will deliver the information they need to access in that particular instance in the way that works for them. So when designing an app, you have to make sure that you consider the descriptiveness of your visuals and you find the right balance between making them visually appealing, easy to understand, and at the same time, not too gimmicky, not too game-like, so that it's suitable for the actual field services at work. The visuals also need to be practical. With the modern tools, it's great to design animated figures. It's a, it, you can design anything you want to make it almost like a Pokemon Go game. The challenge is that once the initial novelty of the system wears out, your users will need to have something that works fast and something that is easy to use. So any gimmick you may include in the system, it will reject it by the long-term users. It may, it may delight uh, first-time users, but once the actual users begin to use it as a daily tool, then it changes. So you have to consider the practical approach to uh, designing visuals. And finally, visuals need to be appealing. Everybody prefers to see something that looks good. It may not be lifelike, but you have to invest time and effort into building something that delights the eye and make sure that users do not reject your system based purely on its looks. Another critical component that you need to consider when building an app is how you're going to position the model relative to the user. Without accurate positioning, the system is unlikely to exceed the level of a gimmick or a prototype, and you must find a way that is optimal for your users when it comes to positioning. There are several different ways how you can position user and model in space, and some of them include GNSS or RTK tools. That has its own challenges because not every GNSS device is easy to integrate with every visualization tool. And also there are some IP challenges to consider when you're designing certain algorithms because companies have been in that game for some time and some methods for positioning users in space are covered by existing IP. Second option is GNSS less. What it means is that you need to find a good way of placing model relative to the user with high accuracy without the support of any external devices. 
main reason for that is most users out in the field do not want to carry or don't have access to expensive equipment or bulky equipment and therefore you need to find a way of positioning the model relative to them so that they can use it with high accuracy without buying any, uh, any additional hardware. Depending on the type of the system you design, you may also consider indoor visualizations and some others, for example, subway tunnels. Plenty of companies want to use now augmented reality indoors for visualizing MEP information, mechanical electrical plumbing. And also plenty of companies right now want to improve their operations in subway tunnels, in railroad tunnels. Both of these environments have their challenges. The main challenge with indoors is uh, finding your accurate location and then finding your accurate location not only horizontally but vertically as well and then separating information that is not relevant to user. With tunnels, the situation is much more complex because not only you have to you have challenges with the actual positioning and how to accomplish it, and also challenging light conditions, both dim and really bright lights, typical to any tunnel, will interfere with the AR app functioning since most of them rely on optical tracking. Therefore, we strongly suggest creating a quick prototype before commissioning the full-scale deployment and testing that prototype in the exact environment where you plan, plan to deploy your app. Having addressed the first two components, which is descriptive visuals and positioning accuracy, you may consider visual accuracy as well. Visual accuracy encompasses many aspects, including accurate scaling of the model, 3D perspective, both of which are fairly easy to, uh, to overcome. However, you also need to think about things like elevation. The world is not flat, and therefore you need to consider elevation changes at job sites and how they will affect visuals. And also, you need to build some basic levels of environmental understanding into the app, or otherwise the field of view will be limited to the immediate surroundings, only on flat surfaces. So both elevation changes and environmental understanding become an integral component of any advanced augmented reality app designed for field services. By now, users have gotten accustomed to seeing good AR applications out there, and it's no longer enough to just have beautiful visuals or even accurate positioning to satisfy the needs of a typical user. You have to consider how your system fits into existing workflows, which quite often means adding collaboration or collaborative components into your system to help users share their views, request remote help, or communicate issues they identified in the field with augmented reality. Since augmented reality apps tend to lose orientation once you go in and out of the app, it's very important that those components do not come as an external tool but rather can be used in the conjunction with the app or built directly into the app so the users can utilize them without switching between apps. Finally, the last critical component of a good AR system is an efficient backend. When designing a backend, you need to think about at least three elements, including data delivery mechanisms, efficient processing, and enterprise integration. When designing the data delivery mechanism, you need to have a very good understanding of the environment in which your users will operate. If they work strictly in the offline environment and they need to download the model before they head out on site, you need to come up with a good way for version control to make sure that they have the latest model on their device. And also you need to make sure that you have basic validation steps to avoid situations when somebody goes out and they have no visuals to access because a file was corrupt or it didn't download completely. If your users are online mode, uh, online users only, you need to think about the efficient pipeline to push all the data from the service to the device. Optimizing rendering pipeline is critical for large models. Modern phones can handle quite large models and quite sophisticated models 
However, they have their own limits, and therefore it's important for you to consider the size of a typical model that you're going to push through your system, and then design rendering processes around it. You can use uh, tools and techniques such as cloud rendering or hybrid rendering to help you uh, with showing information that otherwise would overwhelm a typical phone or HoloLens device. The last component to consider is how well the system will blend into existing enterprise environment. For this, you need to consider security, ongoing administration, and other components that might be critical to the system acceptance by the enterprise. Incorporating Bentley iTwin services into your project has several advantages. When you look at the landscape of ER system components, Bentley iTwin services help reduce development efforts or eliminate them altogether in at least three areas. Visuals coming from Bentley iTwin services are already optimized for the target user. And that helps you reduce the time that you need to spend on designing visuals, validating them with the end user, and then redesigning them. Utilizing iTwin services also helps you with increasing visual accuracy. Elements such as elevation handling, different projection systems are already built into iTwin services, and therefore you don't have to worry about, about building them from scratch. And lastly, the data delivery tools for Bentley are optimized for handling large models, and you can utilize a variety of APIs to streamline the process of delivering and rendering information on your device. Down the road, you can also explore additional components that we haven't had a chance to utilize quite yet, including integration with ProjectWise and relying on other APIs that Bentley is currently building. Bentley's focus on delivering tools optimized for a specific environment makes the job of somebody like us easy. We have plenty of experience building tools for different BIM, GIS systems, native file support, and we found that Bentley has become our default provider when it comes to BIM needs. The main reason for that is the iTwin and the iTwin synchronizer are extremely easy to use. The whole process is streamlined and very easy to handle even for the non-technical person. And once you optimize all the different processes, it builds a streamlined and simple workflow that manages itself. Because of Bentley's focus on different elements of spatial positioning of different objects, rather than positioning of objects relative to one another, it makes it easy for us to utilize this in real life world where we need to work with different coordinates, latitude, longitude, and elevation. Bentley iTwin services will help you simplify your AR or MR app development. However, they are not a substitute for internal R&D. Modern AR frameworks make it very easy to design a simple app. It doesn't require much effort and it can be built in a matter of days. However, building something that fits into existing workflows and can be utilized effectively in the field is very, very difficult and requires a lot of time for testing, validating your hypothesis, and redesigning your system. With that, I want to thank you for having us today, and I would like to open up the floor to your questions.